Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. As usual, if you aren't already subscribed, please consider doing so. I would greatly appreciate it. And also, feel free to leave down in the comment section down below any comments or questions that you might have regarding any videos I've done in the past or any questions in general. And also, uh, feel free to leave a suggestion down below about what you would like to see next. So let's jump right into it. For today, uh, we're going to continue with our, I guess, Visual Force series of tutorials and today i want to talk a bit about the custom controller so let's uh, go into our visual studio code and start writing some code in visual studio code and um, again as always if you aren't familiar with this environment setup i will leave a link down in the description box below on how to get set up with visual studio code so feel free to check that out uh, and I think before we actually start talking about what a custom controller is and how it's different from a standard controller or standard list controller, if you've been watching my previous videos, uh, let's go ahead and just create our files. So I'm going to hit Command Shift P because I'm on a Mac, but I believe it would be Control Shift P if you're on Windows. And I'm going to go ahead and just click on this command to create a Visual Force page. And I will just give this a name of Visual Force custom controller since that's just the example we're going to do today and i'll just drop it to the, to the default directory and as you can see here after the command runs we have some boilerplate code which i'll kind of just remove that and i'll hit save also uh, i should probably create the apex page as well because that's going to serve our as our custom controller so let's see if i can find that command because i am too lazy to, to type in myself so we'll say create and there should be one for Apex class right here. And for this one, we'll just call this, um, I don't know, uh, I guess I'll just give it the same name, Visual Force Custom Controller. That should be fine. We'll drop it in our classes default directory. And as you see here, we now have an Apex page. So let's go into our Visual Force page and kind of go over what a custom controller is. So assuming you haven't seen any of my previous videos, um, we last went over standard controllers and what we said that was basically it is just code that the Salesforce, I guess, company or ecosystem writes for you anytime that you create a brand new object. So whether it's a standard object or custom object, essentially in the background, and you don't get to see this, there is some Apex code that is written for you that has some basic functionality. Um, and typically what those standard controllers will have, whether it's like for an account or a custom object, it'll have some functionality on how to save a page, on how to edit a page, on how to delete a record, things like that. And those are all, that's all logic that's written or pretty much pre-written for you that you don't have to write yourself. Now, a custom controller, basically it's, it's an Apex class as well, but this is something that you are, you as a developer or administrator are completely responsible for creating yourself. And this is something that you would only ever want to create if you need to write some additional functionality that is not covered by the, the standard controller. And we'll kind of get into the nuances a little bit, but I'll probably make more videos in the future um, as to um, what those nuances are. But in a nutshell, you would use a custom controller when the base functionality of that standard controller is not enough for what you're trying to accomplish. So as an example, um, I'm going to pull up the code we wrote for just the standard controller. Uh, which is, sorry, the standard controller visual force page, which is this code right here. And as you notice, uh, we defined the standard control as the account, right? And we don't actually have, we didn't actually, we didn't create an apex class or page or whatever uh, called account. This is just something that Salesforce provides to us for free. But because we're referencing some standard functionality built into Salesforce, we're able to call this action called quick save. And quick save is just some, some, Apex method that exists on the standard account controller that allows us to do this action of saving our page quickly, apparently. Uh, in reality, quick save is just, uh, it allows you to save without redirecting to some other page. It, stay, it stays on your Visual Force page. But regardless, we didn't have to write that code. Now let's say you wanted to do a, a save, but it's a bit more complicated. Like your save needed to do like some, I don't know, for some reason, like some API call to some other web service or some other weird logic or other crazy logic that's not covered by that quick save well in that case you can't really utilize the quick save um or save method uh, in your scenario you would need to write an apex class 
um, and then define your controller as that custom Apex class. And then you would write a method that does everything you want it to do, whether it's like validation logic, um, that's only in code for some reason. Um, but like I said, there, there are very specific scenarios in which you would want to do that. Like I said, uh, I will make more videos in the future um, about the nuances of custom controllers. But in a nutshell, use custom controllers when you need to have some very specific, uh, some more functionality that the standard controller doesn't provide to you, either because your business logic is a bit more complex than just like a simple save or edit or delete or whatever have you. And I also do want to point out, um, let's jump into our actual Apex class that we defined here. And you'll notice that when I ran the command to create this Apex class for us, um, it was created, we got, we got the template or scaffold or whatever you want to call it. And you'll notice here these keywords, public with sharing. So by default, because we generated this using a command, it gave us those keywords with sharing. And I don't want to get too, too into it right now, but essentially what that is saying is that this Apex class will follow all of the, um, it basically will run in, I believe, uh, it essentially means that this Apex class will not run in what is called system mode. I think it runs like in user mode. Essentially, it will respect any sharing rules, fuel level security, or any permissions that that current user that's executing this logic um, has. Uh, if we remove that, though, so as an example, if, if we don't specify or we write the keyword without sharing, I believe that's, that's the term, it will make sure that this class will run in system mode. And the, I want to make that distinction because even though we saw that this, this command we ran to generate this class for us added with sharing, uh, by default at Apex class, um, if you created yourself, you probably wouldn't have done with sharing or unless you, you, you meant to do that. And by a consequence of that, if we were to link this Visual Force custom controller Apex class to our, our Visual Force page without that keyword, well, now this controller runs entirely in system mode, which means that it doesn't care if the user even has those permissions or that field level security or any sharing rules. It does. It just doesn't apply. It, it runs as if, you know, you're, you're a system. Uh, it runs as if, as if it's just in system mode. And like I said, I will make more videos in the future going into more of the nuances, but right now I kind of just want to like touch upon the basics. So for, for now, we'll kind of remove that with sharing keyword and we'll by default, like I said, if, if you don't specify it, it's without sharing. You can explicitly say without sharing to kind of enforce that as well. Um, and you're kind of getting to like some, some more, um, again, I keep saying the word nuance, but like uh, before I move on, just as an example, if this class inherited, uh, another class inherited this class or vice versa, um, if you don't specify those keywords, then this class could potentially inherit from those sharing rules of that other class. So it, it can get a bit complex depending on how crazy you go with your code. But for now, uh, kind of just disregard that. We'll say without sharing uh, in, um, implicitly. So we'll just remove those keywords. We'll hit save and we can kind of go from there. So for today's exercise, I guess you can say, let's create a Visual Force page that allows our user to create an account and contact at the same time. So to start with, we have to define our controller. So we'll just type out controller. And here we will just put the name of our actual Apex class. So in this case, it's called Visual Custom Controller. That is how you how you basically tie our Apex class to this controller. So with that, let's go on to the next portion. And because we will, we will be expecting some input from the user, we're, we we will need a form. So we'll say Apex form. And inside of here, let's go ahead and create a, a page block just to kind of like organize ourselves a little bit. So create a page block. And let's give this one a title of, we'll say account info or something like that. And then we'll create another page block down here for contact info. And inside of here, inside of the first page block, we will create a page block section. And again, um, in my previous videos, I kind of went over like, what the semantics of all these little tags mean. So feel free to refer to, I believe all these Visual Force tutorials are now in a playlist, so it should be easier to access. But anyhow, um, so we create a page block section. And actually, they just have one page block. We don't need multiple. We'll just add our information down here. So this page block, let's call this account contact creation or something like that. And in the page block section right here, this title 
will be for account info. And in case I haven't made myself clear, um, we will allow the user to create an account and a, a contact and that contact will be tied to the account. So in the second section, we'll have the contact info and in here, inside the page block section, let's create a page block section item to actually display the, the fields that we want the user to populate. So page block section item. And then here, uh, we will actually include our input fields. So input field right here. And I actually don't know what is a required field in this trailhead org I have for accounts or contacts. So we'll, we'll double check that in a bit. Um, but we also want to have an, a, um, an, an output label probably so we can see what we're, what we're trying to, uh, fill out. So we'll have this output label right here. We'll close that out. The output label requires a few fields, which I completely forgot. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into, um, an older tutorial we did so I can see those very quickly. So we'll do this one right here. And yeah, so it requires the value, which is just like the, the label and then the four, which it, uh, we use that to tie it to an input field. So basically the idea of the input field should match the four, uh, attribute of the output label. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this cause I'm lazy and we'll go back to our custom controller visual force page. I'll paste that here and, and I'm pretty sure we probably should have an account name. So I'll, I'll kind of just leave that there. And the ID for this can, I guess, just be the account name because it should match. And the value will kind of be something that we'll, we'll kind of get into a bit right here. So I want to say the account name is the only required field on the account object in my org. So we'll kind of just leave it at that. Um, and then let's go ahead and copy this and we'll paste it into the contact as well. And for the contact, um, let's just put contact name right there. We'll kind of copy this or change this a little bit and then go ahead and copy that and we'll paste it in here. Okay. So we now have two page block sections, one for the account info, one for the contact info. Uh, it's an input field. So we're going to allow the user to fill out those fields before we submit them. And now we need to go into our custom controller and kind of define some stuff so we can actually make this form useful. So in our visual force custom controller, the constructor was defined for us automatically, which is fine. Um, but at the top right here, outside of the constructor, I want to define a few things. So I'm going to go ahead and create a public and we need an account variable or object, I guess. And we'll just call this account. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it public and I'm going to add this right here. And if you're not familiar with this, this is basically just defining a getter and setter for it. So essentially what the code you're basically saying is that you want you behind the scenes, you want to have a method. And just as an example, let's take the get as an, as an example, by having that, the syntax up here, you're basically saying that behind the scenes, there is this method called, um, get account, which is basically all it's doing is just returning the account, uh, like so right here. And what you would do normally it, you can define it yourself if you want. Um, and you, and if you did that, you probably would want to set this, um, to private that way uh, nobody can access it and they would only be able to access it via a method. Um, but I'm kind of lazy and you know, there's more than one way to code something, but because I'm lazy, I don't want to define stuff. I don't have to. So I'm going to go ahead and just make this a public a variable and define the getter and setter. And that's fine for now. So because now we have this, if I go ahead and hit save, we now have access in our visual force page. We have access to this account variable. So I'm going to go ahead and right here, use this squirrely syntax right here. And we want to say that the user should be able to input something into our account object right here. So that's basically how you define it. I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, essentially, because we're connected to the visual force custom controller, there is this variable we define called account, which is right here. And it's of type account, which is an object in our Salesforce. We automatically define the getter and setter. So we don't have to do it ourselves. And the code is smart enough to know that when we reference it, we're asking it to get something on the account. And in this case, we want to get the name of, of that account. And I think that's the correct uh, field name for that. We'll double check in a second. 
But essentially what we want to do the same thing for the the contact. So we're going to say contact contact and then just define the get and setter like that and we should be good to go. So in our constructor, we're not going to really utilize it today and there's not much that I want to do with it, so we'll kind of just leave it closed like that. And we do want to define at least one method and that's probably the save method. Um, because you kind of want to commit something to our database or else this page is kind of useless to our customer, our theoretical customer. So let's go ahead and create a public and then uh, the return type can be page reference. Doesn't really matter too much, but I'll get into that in a second and we'll call this save. And again, because we're using a custom controller and we're not referencing, oh, sorry about that. We're not referencing a standard controller. We have to define all the logic ourselves. Like we don't get any help from Salesforce. Uh, at, at this point because we're using a custom controller so we have to define the save functionality ourselves in here uh we should probably do a few things basically we just want to commit the changes that happened here in the save so i'm going to kind of cheat a little bit we won't like obviously none of this is production grade code or anything right and i'm pretty sure any of the required fields in on, on my objects like the account name and the contact name probably those they're going to have built-in validation so basically what that means if, if if we try to commit something and save it without providing the, the required fields you should get the expected output of an error saying you can't save something without defining the required fields right so because i know that's that's a built-in feature in salesforce i'm not going to have any validation logic to make sure that the user actually filled out the information before clicking on save the only thing i want to do here which is i guess kind of like delves in into more of the custom aspect of why you would have a custom control in the first place is I want to associate this contact uh, with the, with this account because at least in this org and I'm pretty sure in most or not if all Salesforce orgs the contact is a child of the account that's just a relationship of them so what I want to say here is that contact and I'm pretty sure it's just account we want to set that to account ID like so so that basically establishes that relationship. Like at that point, we're we're good to go. And once we have that, all we really need to do is just kind of insert our account. So as an example, and again, I know none of this is production grade code. So people that are more, more experienced or might cringe a little bit, but we're going to say insert account and insert contact like so. And once we, we're done with that, we're going to just return a null. Now you might see here that, you know, I, I put a return type of page reference, but we're just returning null because we don't really care about like returning our visual force page to some other location. Um, and I mean, and by other location, I mean like going to a different page or anything. Um, all I want to happen is just a refresh. And the way you do that is just by saying null. I guess you could just like return the current page as well. That, that might work. But at least in all the Salesforce documentation I've seen, if you're not working with like if you're if you're not trying to change the page something else once it saves like as an example going back to like the standard page layout or something they usually just say return null and i never seen an, a good explanation as to why that's the case so kind of just going to follow the the standard procedures that salesforce documentation has and we should be good to go from there so once we have all of this in order for us to commit the code and actually be, before we even go that far we actually need to define this field right here so it's probably just going to be name and let's go into our org to verify that I'm even pulling the correct names and then we have all the required fields. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into accounts and get the API names of those. So let's go ahead and click on edit object. And we'll go to fields and relationships and let's get the account name. That is just name. So that's that works. So basically, we just need the name for account. And let's let's go to the contacts real quick to see what's kind of required of that. So let's jump into our contact object we we'll hit fields and relationships and we look for the name or we use the quick find so name name is just name yeah and i'm pretty sure name is that includes the last name and name so we just need to specify name so yeah it just looks like just two possible required fields let's go ahead and jump into our vs code and continue on so as we can see here we've i guess successfully define them we were correct and last thing before we go ahead and push this to our trailhead org is we actually need to define a button or else this whole page is kind of useless so like i showed in the previous video at the top right here still inside of the page block let's go ahead and define another tag and this one will be page block buttons 
And what this tag allows us to do, or what it does for us rather, is we define within here any buttons we want, and this will automatically show the buttons at the top of the page and at the bottom of the page without us having to duplicate our, our markup right here. So kind of useful. Um, in here, I'm going to go ahead and create a command button. And let's give it some attributes. So the first attribute we probably want to define is the value, which is the label for it. And I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, just say create records because we're creating two records at a time. And the action, that is just kind of what code we want to call. So we'll use our syntax to define that. And basically we want to call the save function, which exists in our cells, in our Apex code right here. So I'll get, go ahead and hit save on this and let's try deploying it. Hopefully we didn't make any mistakes. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on our Visual Force page. And actually I should probably uh, deploy the class first because the Visual Force page is referencing a class that doesn't actually exist yet in our actual org. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on the class and then hit deploy source to org right here. And it shouldn't take too long to deploy. So as we can see here, we have an actual error. So let's kind of go through what that is. It's saying illegal assignment from ID to account on line nine right here. So I'm actually not sure if um, account is the name of the relationship lookup. So let me look that up. And on the account, we have, it's actually accounts ID right here. So that's, that's completely my mistake. So let me go ahead and copy that and change it. So it's actually account ID. That is the name of the lookup of the lookup to the account. So let me go ahead and hit save and let's try that one more time. And it looks like it is now a success. So let's go ahead and now deploy the visual force page, deploy source to org. And it looks like we got an error because silly me, I did not <laughs> write the, the correct uh, name in our markup right here. We call this visual custom controller and it's actually visual force custom controller. So let me go ahead and make that change and we will now try one more time to deploy source to org. And now it's success. So let's go ahead and check it out. So um, as usual, e an easy way to access our visual force page is by changing the URL to forward slash apex and the name, the name of our visual force page. So let's go ahead and do that. And you'll see here um, that we have account name, but we can't click on the contact. So Let's see why that's happening. And just to kind of show what the issue was, um, we were referencing the name field right here, um, but the required field is actually just a last name. And I'm pretty sure you have to specify these fields separately for some reason. Now, like, as soon as I changed this to the last name and I deployed it back in our org, the input field appeared. So let's go ahead and show that. You'll see here that we cannot input stuff. So let's go ahead and try adding some stuff here. So we'll call this test account number one, just so we can easily distinguish that. And we'll call this contact or <laughs> rather test contact one. And if we click on this, we get a very interesting error message. And I actually did this on purpose, believe it or not. So let's go ahead and jump into line nine to see what's going on. So, and like I said, I did this completely on purpose because I wanted to kind of show you like there are a lot of gotchas when it comes to writing your own logic. And if you're not careful, it can really bite you in the butt. So the issue with this code is that it's basically line number nine right here. The issue we have at hand is we're trying to associate this contact with the account, right? And, and the way you do, you typically do that is by um, passing in the ID of the parent into that lookup field. In this case, we're passing in the account ID to the, the child um, account ID uh, lookup field. The problem though is this is a brand new account and it doesn't yet have an ID because it hasn't been entered into the system. So essentially what you have to do, um, and again, I, I, I would want to strongly stress this is not production grade code. So don't you know take that for what it is. But essentially what you would want to do is you would want to enter the account first because at that point now the the system would have assigned an ID to that account, and then you would want to make a change to your contact, uh, which in this case is just the assigning the account ID uh, in that lookup field to associate the contact. So if we made this change, entered the account, so that the account now has an ID, and then now you're able to associate that contact with the account with the with the account right here. I hope that makes sense. 
But yes, I did do that on purpose just so you can kind of see one of the many gotchas that you can potentially face. So let's go ahead and hit save on this and we'll deploy source to org and hopefully now it, it works. So once we refresh the page, let's go ahead and try it one more time. This time we'll change it to two to kind of signify that this is our second attempt. And let's change this to test contact number two and let's click on create records. So we're going to hit save and lo and behold, we still have the same error or essentially the same error. The error being that we are attempting to dereference a null object. And I promise this is the last time I'm going to do a gotcha, at least for this specific video. But let's go back into our code and explain why we're still getting this error message. Okay, so I, I promise this is the last time I, I do it an intentional gotcha in here. But essentially the problem, even though we kind of fixed this little snippet, which definitely was a little, was a part of the problem. Like there's no way of knowing what the account ID is until after you insert something into the system because Salesforce is the one responsible for giving that record ID. But the bigger issue at play here is that we've defined these account variables, which are actually objects that represent our records, right? But because these are objects and this is object oriented programming, we defined them, but we didn't actually initialize them. So essentially what we're doing here, what this kind of looks like in the background is that, you know, account is equal to null and you can't insert an account if it's equal to null because we haven't initialized it yet. And furthermore, the interesting part is the user like to him or her or whoever's in charge of the, of the, of the thing, what we think or we're expecting to happen is we think that when they were in putting something into those input fields, we thought they were changing, you know, the property of account name to something, right? But because it was set to null, like right here, how I'm showing you, they actually weren't changing anything because again, it's null. Like there's no property of there's no property of like null dot name because that's that's impossible to have. Null means it's not hasn't been initialized. There is no memory space allocated for that uh, for that object. So. I know I kind of lied at this at the start. And again, this is intentional because I really want to make sure that, that you guys understand these little gotchas because they can't bite you in the butt um, if you're not careful. The constructor is actually very important for this case because we're using a custom controller and we're now we're doing all the logic on our own. We need to define that account. So in here, and you can even use the, this keyword if you want, even though it's been, I don't really think it's necessary, but it might be good syntax. So we'll say this account is equal to a new account. By doing this action right here in the constructor, we are initializing the account variable. And for those of you that are not too familiar with the constructor, the constructor is essentially just a piece of logic that will run whenever this class is instantiated. And this class is instantiated as soon as someone navigates to this visual force page, this visual force page sees that there is a controller associated with it. So it will instantiate it behind the scenes, um, your class. And when, and in the moment that it's instantiated, this constructor will run once, um, once it's instantiated. So essentially saying like, if there's anything that you want to have happen before the page is ready to, to be used by the user, write your code in here. And really what we want is we want to initialize these variables so that the user can actually use them and have something to do with them. So essentially what we're saying when this page runs, this constructor needs to run and this code needs to have happened. And the only thing we're really doing is we're just instantiating these variables we defined up here. And like I said, I'm going to make more videos in the future going over the nuances and like why this is public, this should be private, what this getter and setter really are, how to define them yourselves, permission sets, field per permissions, all that good stuff I will go over in the future. But if you have any questions now, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to help you. But pretty much th that was kind of like the missing link that... Um, I purposely <laughs> laid out so that, that we'll kind of stumble upon this together. But yeah, um, the two gotchas are that we need to initialize our variables or else we're not really doing anything in memory, uh, or rather there is nothing to commit to in memory. And the second part is, has to do with this account, this ID stuff right here. We need to insert our account first because without inserting it, this account doesn't have an ID. The ID is given uh, given to it by Salesforce. Salesforce is the one that assigns the ID. That's the record ID, uh, essentially. And by inserting it first and then associating our contact with their account, that, that makes it possible. So I hope all this rambling kind of makes sense to you guys. But um, if it doesn't, leave me down any questions that you have down below.
So let's go ahead and save this and deploy it to our org and let's try it one more time. And now, if I'm not lying to you guys, this should all work. So I've gone ahead and refreshed this page. And now let's type in some stuff. And you can, as you can see here, I've added some more records or tried some more stuff to make sure it's working. But uh, let's go ahead and say, just, just to make this a bit more unique, test account 101 and test contact 101. Let's go ahead and, and create records. And as you can see here, the page refresh, nothing happens because we, we haven't specified any logic about, you know, clearing stuff out or, you know, if there should be like a loading spin or any stuff like that. That's all stuff that you can define via JavaScript or now your Apex class if you like, which we'll get into in the future. But for now, uh, let's go ahead and uh, kind of just refresh our contact recently viewed list view. And as you can see here, we have a test contact 101 with an associated account name for test account 101. And if we click into it, into each rather, we can see here that this is the default page layout that I have for this org. Um, this is related to some other videos we made in the past. Don't really worry about that. But here is our account page. And here is the account name that we get, gave it and not much else. We didn't do really, we didn't really do much with it, with it. And as you can see here, here is our contact and here's the name of the contact. And here is the associated account with it. So this kind of does indeed show that our contact is now associated with its parent account. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I hope this kind of made sense. Feel free to let me know if it didn't. And I will definitely be making more videos in the future. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed, learned something new, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.